Hey folks, Ian France here. I want to show you some really cool things I've been working on the past couple of days. Just give me a little bit of time here because you're going to learn something. All right, first up, Power Toys. Microsoft has released this Power Toys uh, application. Here's a little icon for it. And some of the things that it can do are listed on the GitHub page, Fancy Zones and File Explorer Preview. I'm going to show you, I'm going to show those things to you. Fancy Zones is pretty much worth it in itself. That's the way that you see that I've set up the different zones the way that I like them on both my primary and secondary monitors. And so I can have applications in these zones and I can also take applications easily out of those zones. Here is the preview pane in action. So now when you click on a, a document, so there's a markdown document, text document, you can actually start to preview these things in uh, Windows Explorer. So pretty cool. I actually think those two features alone are, are worth the install, but there's a couple other things. So Microsoft Power Toys, definitely worth checking out. All right, on to the, uh, the real piece I want to talk about. Um, my coworker has written some really expert level SQL code. It doesn't work in Docker, so I had to set things up what I consider the hard way. And I don't recommend doing it this way, but sometimes you have to, so it's worth a little explanation of what you're seeing. So I've set up Windows Server 2019 Virtual Machine. Inside of that, I have installed the SQL Server 2019 trial version. I've installed Firefox. Um, there's no connection in a virtual machine to my local computer, so there's no easy way to transfer files. I am, at this point, admitting another machine but in order to use these advanced SQL features SP configure the OLE automation you have to use a a licensed SQL server uh, engine so you can't use the docker SQL server uh, image okay regardless AdventureWorks 2017 I went ahead and installed that and I rewrote the code that he put for our production into the AdventureWorks database so you can try this yourself. What does it do? Well, what it does is pretty interesting. When we roll out changes, any change, insert changes, update changes, store procedure, job templates, any changes we put on the SQL Server, we have to write a corresponding rollback script. To undo those changes. This code automatically does that for you for at least the insert and the update uh, procedures. So here you see in AdventureWorks, I'm adding new employee 100,000. Business entity ID is just the primary key for like an employee ID number. And I'm adding a new phone number for them. All right, so let's go ahead and run that. This tells me that it works. The code actually has a fair amount of messages in it, you know, that it's generating the rollback script, that it successfully generated it, that the merge of the code actually worked between these tables. And what that builds in the background is a new rollback script with today's uh, date and timestamp on it. In there, I now have an, a way to undo the change that I just deployed. So customer or employee 100,000 new phone number of all ones, I can undo that change. It automatically wrote this rollback script for me. Well, let's talk about what if we update a record? We update a record. Let's go ahead and make this one all uh, twos now. Okay, run that. I have now a new rollback script, new timestamp on it. This goes ahead and undoes that that update change that I just made. So this is the old phone number that was in the database for that uh, record. So we can go ahead and run that and it go in it and you can see that it works. Now that record's going to have all ones in for the telephone number. So pretty cool stuff. This is really complicated code. I'm not going to really go through that. I'm going to show you where on my um, my repository you can view this yourself if you want to experiment with it and it out of the box will work with these AdventureWorks uh, 2017 database images, which are also in the same repository. All right, so that's the hard way 
to sort of build and test this, but sometimes you have to do that. The easy way, and what I've worked on for some time, is using uh, Docker. So if you go to my uh, GitHub and Docker with Databases project, there's a rundown uh, here of kind of what is in here as well as how to set it up and how to get things working. But since I'm here, let me just give you a little bit of an overview as to what's in here. So what I'll show you is the PowerShell Docker deployments for SQL Server or Postgres. There are both Docker Run as well as Docker Compose examples. There's some intermediate tools. There's a DBA Tools PowerShell plugin that automatically handles the restore and backup. There's Power BI that'll connect to the AdventureWorks database. You can get dashboard visualizations and examples with that. There's also SSIS in here now, which I need to add. That'll actually merge the AdventureWorks and Wide World importers into a database, merges their products tab product tables together. So you can experiment with SSIS. And there's a lot of T-SQL code and then some O-Stress testing code that I wrote um, is in here as well for SQL Server. So let's go through it. Uh, very simple layout. There's database software in the repo. And I'm going to actually navigate it here in my uh, cloned version. So on my local machine, I'm going to go into Microsoft. The PowerShell VS Code is where things get started from. And there's a workspace. For VS Code. So if you launch the workspace, it will automatically know the two initialization files that you need, as well as put your path. It'll come back here in a minute, but it'll put your path down there from where you executed the workspace from. And then all you have to do is run these lines. So if you go ahead and pull the latest uh, SQL Server. Docker image from uh, the Docker, you know, Microsoft, it's from Docker Hub, and it's Microsoft supported SQL Server 2019 Community Edition. There's some SQL Server tools, and then this builds the Docker container for you that looks at your current directory here, PowerShell VS Code, looks at the database backups that I already have, and loads the dash V, that's the volume parameter, into the docker volume forward slash source. A little complicated, you can look up these commands to understand more of how they work, but really what that sets you up for is not just building the, the docker uh, piece, but now you can back up the databases. So that's what the second script is for, it gives you a choice. You go ahead and install DBA tools, and you'll see that I have a restore database and also their uh, backup DBA database. The restore database does what it says. It points to that same path. Now it's the source adventure works uh, because it's pointing to the Docker containers path, which is an Alpine Linux distribution. So it's forward slash source, forward slash adventure works, forward slash the, the backup file. And so that is the same thing that you would actually see in the database backups folder. If you navigate to the project, here's the, the adventure works. Now remember that's on forward slash source, forward slash adventure works, and then forward slash the adventure works backup file. So this will automatically do all that for you. You shouldn't have to do anything except, except uh, press F8 in here and run these lines. And it would go ahead and install the backup the adventure works. This is the data warehouse. Wide world importers is, is too large of a database to store on GitHub. So I wrote something that will go ahead and uh, get, get you that and through a web request. It will download it and you can then back it up uh, that way. So, or restore it, I should say, because the, the backup is if you start making changes like I just showed you and inserting records and you wanna give that change to someone else or you wanna experiment with how do I save my changes as a backup and restore them, that's what this code will do. So this will save you a backup file. All right, so that'll get you started with the, um, with the project so you can then uh, in here, I already have it running. So it's called MSSQL-Latest. That's the container name and the password is foobarbaz. It's in the, uh, it's in the uh, file. So if I start SSMS,
starting up here. Virtual Machine is um, quite a lot of resources to run on my little laptop, which is three years old and giving me some high CPU uh, messages. But uh, should load here in a second. There we go. All right. Bring it over. So, uh, look close. There's a little tux icon next to the uh, the database. Kind of cool. And in the databases is exactly what I was talking about. You could do. It'll restore the AdventureWorks, the AdventureWorks data warehouse. Here's the Wide World Importers. Here's the merged database of the uh, two different product tables that the SSIS package will go ahead and and build for you. So, this is how I practice. This is a really easy way without a virtual machine for anyone to get in here and practice building their skills either on the SQL Server side, the Power BI side, um, SSIS. You know, I've been working with the different databases and building uh, areas of Power BI and icons and dashboard templates. So there's a lot of stuff I've made in, the, in this uh, repo as I've worked on it over the last year and a half. Oh, let me show you the... Uh, the SQL Server code too. So if you go into the Microsoft and you go under SQL Server and you go under SQL Code, here's where uh, the different areas of the, that I've kind of worked on, and they're a little more intermediate stuff like Resource Governor certainly is, Service Broker. Um, here's the script that I worked on, Rollback Generation. So if you go on Rollback Generation and you want to look at um, how that code works, you can do that on my repo. Um, you know, windowing, uh, query performance monitoring. I wrote lookup table templates. I wrote calendar and date table templates. So a lot of, and, and job templates to automatically script um, creating SQL jobs in, in SQL Server. So a lot of help, helpful stuff in here that I use a lot to uh, just have references and, and go back to, and you can use control shift M on most of the SQL codes and kind of plug in the parameters that you want when I write a template. So all available on my uh, GitHub page in the Dockers with Database project. And I just wanted to show you that. And that's what I did on my vacation. So I hope you enjoyed it, learned something, and I'll talk with you soon. Bye.